What's going on you guys? Gaming here coming to you with another video. Today we're going to be talking about Square Enix. We all know how they've been treating, the, especially the Xbox consumer. They've been a little bit harsh on PC, but normally their games do come out on PC here lately. But when it comes to Xbox, I feel like there was a good portion, probably about a year where there was lots of good conversation. We got the majority of the Final Fantasy games in Game Pass, but ultimately... It does look like they have been some games that PlayStation just, they swooped in there and they grabbed. Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy VII Remake's one of them. Final, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is one of them. And clearly Final Fantasy XVI. Now why I'm here today, will you guys might ask. Why is Addict here talking to you guys about Final Fantasy once again? I mean, you can look over here. There's a couple videos about Final Fantasy and JRPGs in general. You guys know that I'm a, a huge fan of the genre. I love their type of games, especially turn-based. I'm playing through Persona right now, again. But you guys could see, I'm about these games. I make these videos because I love this industry. And when I popped up on Twitter and I saw dozens of tweets coming at me, they're saying, Square Enix allegedly, actually let me pop over here. Square Enix allegedly slightly panicking about the Final Fantasy 16 PS5 pre-orders. I know a lot of Xbox people are using this for that for that, you know, console war kind of thing on Twitter, and that's okay to a point, you know, as long as you aren't disrespectful to, you know, the people that don't deserve it and you know, you just keep it gaming, you keep it respectful. I don't really mind the console war stuff, but when people saw this, they tagged me and they say, add it. It's because Final Fantasy 16 is not on Xbox that this game might potentially flop. First off, let's be very clear that Square Enix has a history of having unrealistic expectations when it comes to their games. I remember Tomb Raider, they wanted 10 million plus. I think it was 10 million, but it was an absurd number. I, you know, we got to put it in the fact this is Square Enix. Now, I will say that unlike Tomb Raider, Final Fantasy is most likely like the pillar of their company. So I would expect them to, you know, they, they, they would have high expectations when it comes to Final Fantasy 16. Now, let's talk about whether or not it not being on Xbox and just being an exclusive effect of this. Yes, obviously, if you put this on Xbox, on PC, on Switch... With its version on PlayStation, you would have higher sales. But, as much as I would love to blame Square Enix not putting this on the Xbox platform to justify the sales of this game. Coming from someone that loves the Final Fantasy brand and really has grown up with this brand. I've not really been hyped too much for Final Fantasy 16. Now, it doesn't mean I'm not going to play it. I'm going to give it a chance. You know, I think... A huge amount of the audience that went away from the turn base, they still getting them. But it's the original fan base, you know. When you aim for like a huge crowd by changing the combat, changing stuff, make it more like Devil May Cry, it's it's random if you're gonna get a few of them to join, if you're gonna get all of them to join. And I think what's going on here is they've rapidly went away from what made Final Fantasy Final Fantasy to me with this. 15 was okay, 13, uh, 13 X2 and Lightning Returns. I think these four games have really damaged the Final Fantasy brand. And you get these casual audience that's not picking up Final Fantasy as well as the loyal fans that loved this brand for the past 10, 15 years not picking it up either. I do think you have a mixture of casual fans and loyal fans picking it up, but I don't think it's anything drastic. I don't have the game pre-ordered yet. And I had Final Fantasy 15 pre-ordered for a minute. But I think that's the biggest thing here. Now look, Square Enix could do better with the Xbox platform. You know, if 15, 14, 13, and you know, 16, and, and, and Final Fantasy 7 Remake were all on Xbox, which the majority of those games are, then you could really start to point the finger at stuff. But, you know, the fact they didn't have Final Fantasy VII Remake, which is probably one of the most highly anticipated games on the market. The fact that they didn't have Final Fantasy XVI, which is probably one of their biggest games this year. Obviously, you're going to see a lower sell, right? Because it's only on one platform. And then you got to take in the fact that it's it's a PlayStation 4. It's not 
It's the PlayStation 4 or 5. It's not the PlayStation 4. You know, with the 4, you had 100 million plus people that was on that. I think there's a huge migration of console owners going to PC. I think there's a lot of people that just haven't transferred over. Sure, it's been a couple years, but it's still early in the generation. And you have a bunch of people that don't have a PlayStation 5. So clearly, you're not going to get, you're not going to sell a game to someone that don't have the platform. But I do think this is mainly just Square Enix having really high expectations for the game. And, you know, I, I will say with the state of play, the thing they showed at the PlayStation Showcase, which they really shouldn't have showed nothing there. They, they dedicated a whole state of play. I don't know why they were there. I am a little bit more hyped for the game, but at the same time, I got to keep my expectations realistic. I see a lot of similar trends that they did with Final Fantasy 15, focusing on the summons, focusing on certain combat. And it's just like, is the whole game going to be like that? Or are you just cherry picking your best moments in this game? You know, but that's where I'm pretty much stand with this. Final Fantasy 16 definitely did not help itself. Square Enix did not help this game by not being on Xbox or PC, mainly PC and Switch. You know, I think it would have done a lot better if it was on those platforms. But I think there's a lot of people that are too wary about buying an xbox for japanese games so they've already bought a playstation or a pc or a switch to play these games and if you're already thinking about these platforms you're already reserving these games why would you ever buy this on xbox so you know even if 16 was on xbox it might sell a million maybe two max and it would sell like five six on everything else now sure that's still a sizable amount of pre-orders that they can get but I will say right now, Final Fantasy 16, it might flop. It very well might. Maybe it's just a too much of a, a brand that's been split on what people want from it and what Square Enix thinks other people want from the game too. And that might be the biggest issue. You know, you're trying to aim for these new casuals and you didn't get as many of them as you thought you were going to get. And a lot of the loyal people that you kind of spit in their face a little bit, they're not picking the game up either, so now you have pretty much no one picking the game up compared to what you initially thought. And it's like I said, this could easily just be Square Enix expected way more than they realistically should when it comes to that Final Fantasy 16. Because it's not 7. You know, if they said this about 7, I'd be a little bit more, okay. You know, 7's one of the most popular Final Fantasies, I get it. But I do want to say to all the Xbox people, just stand back. You know, if this game flops, they ain't nothing you could have done about it because Square Enix made that choice for you. Square Enix didn't put that game on your platform and they put it on the other platform and that platform's consumer base did not support the game. It's not your fault. It's Square Enix's fault. And whatever happens to Final Fantasy 16, there will always be that thing in the back of their head where maybe we should have released this on more platforms. Maybe even at that point, maybe even not Xbox, you know, at least PC. But I think, you know, I've been told that ports cost money, but most of the time, especially these big games like Final Fantasy, they'll make that money back. You know, PlayStation made a huge bet and they gave them a bag to keep that game off all the other platforms. And at the end of the day, Square Enix, you're going to have to lie in that grave. If the game doesn't do well and, you know, this game might come out and do extremely well because it's a good game sell from word of mouth and before you know it it is a 10 million plus game and i hope that's the case but this game probably would have flopped even if it was on xbox as well on pc because i see the final fantasy community willing to give it a shot but they're not hyped for it right now maybe that will change when we're closer to the actual release date we're getting pretty close to it now i think it comes out in like two weeks maybe even a week and a half i don't know I hope the game picks up and sells because I love Final Fantasy and I feel like if they see this new direction not painting out for them, if you look at like the Metacritic scores for Final Fantasy, ever since they did this giant shift, the the Metacritic scores have went drastically down. And I, I'm not even like saying like a little bit drastically down. I'm saying like a lot. It's kind of ridiculous. Let's go to Final Fantasy 15 Metacritic score. Let, let's, let's see what this is, man. Let's let's see what this is. Because I, I think we all need to, to do a little bit of research on why this is happening. And th this is like my things. It's saying this game is... This franchise is failing for multiple reasons. And any platform is not the case. 
So look, an 81. So that's respectable. I think we can all agree that that's respectable. We don't need to really go too much into that. Let's just go Final Fantasy. Let's see what all of these did. Let's see all the results. Well, you see, see the 70s and stuff? Okay, so you got the Final Fantasy VII Remake. And I think we can all agree that that game was going to do good regardless. Strangers of Paradise, that game was a horrible game from everyone that told me. 72. We got the 15, 8, you know. The Cydia, 67. Then you got the, the remake of 12, 86. You got Final Fantasy 7, 92. You got Final Fantasy uh, 9. Uh, now I do believe this Final Fantasy 9 is actually like a 94 or something. If I found it for the actual PS, uh, for the PlayStation 1 game. Then you got this Final Fantasy 13, 83. Final Fantasy 10, 92. Right here. Final Fantasy 9, 94. Tactics 88. Look. Guys, I will be the first one to be there with you guys and say, look, this is the reason, Square Enix, you need to be better on this. But at the same time, like, we got to be realistic here. If anything happens to the Final Fantasy brand and they don't sell well or anything happens to the actual brand, the only people to have themselves to blame for it is themselves. And that's just how it is. You know, I do think they need to do better with the Xbox platform, but this... I'm going to be real with you guys. This has nothing to do with Xbox. This has everything to do with the actual condition of the franchise is to the actual people that play the game. Could have helped, though. Definitely could have helped. But anyway, put in the comment section below. Do you think the reason this game is underperforming according to Square Enix is because it's only on PlayStation? Uh, kind of curious to hear you guys' opinion on that. But until next time, this is Gaming Addict. I'm out of here. Peace.